And amen. Come on, let's give it up for the youth. Come on. They did an amazing, amazing, amazing job. They were singing words that we all need. Jesus promised he'll take care of me. And don't you know that life and death is in the power of the tongue? Jesus promised he will take care of me. That's what we have said. That's what we should continue to say when we are in our deepest, darkest hours that he promised. He promised. So it's so important for you today to say, God, what season am I in? Not how long I'm gonna be in the season, but when we come out of that season is what's so good about God. And so I'm grateful, I'm grateful to God that I've been through a lot of seasons. I'm grateful to God that sometimes I didn't even recognize what season I was in, Gloria, but I was in that season. And I just wanna ask somebody today, if you're in a season, just go ahead and praise God for the season you're in. Because if you don't, you cannot praise God for the season that you're in, you might stay stuck in a season longer than you need be. God wants to reach you. God wants to reach us. God wants us to be prosperous. God wants us to be successful. God wants us to have good of this land. So whatever season you are in, if God is calling you today, I ask you, to honor that season, to recognize that season, to know what God told us in January. Whatever season we're in, there's gonna be more in 24. In today's sermon, from the Church of the Living God Temple 208, we have our very own assistant pastor, Dr. Gwen Dowdy Rogers, bringing you the word of God. Sit back and enjoy. We're reminded what our youth said, oh, how wonderful it is. Amen. Well, we thank God this morning for another day. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand praise. You got hands so you can praise him. We thank God. So we honor God this morning. I certainly thank God for allowing me an opportunity to stand before you, realizing it's the gift that God gave to be utilized and nothing that I've done on my own other than being obedient to his will. And so this morning, I'm grateful to stand um, as God is leading in this word, first to me and then to you all. I want to give honor to my husband. Thank God for you, Dr. Rogers. Amen. God bless you. We are grateful for your support. And we are also grateful for our bishop, who is away on business out of town right now. There's so many different things that are happening throughout our district with losses. And so we are praying for our district as we go through this together. So today we stand, we're coming out of recently what we would call or has been deemed as Independence Day. And so we took a look at that. And then I was reminded that we are more than halfway through the year already. Although it may not seem like that, but at other times it does seem like that because we've been through some bends, some bruises, some burdens and near breaks. But we said to ourselves, I can recall God said to me earlier in the year that here we would know and declare and decree that there was going to be more in 24. We said that among ourselves some seven months ago, that there would be more. And as I said, seven months in to these whatever bends of ruse or brokenness that you or I have experienced, Gloria, we're still moving forward in this season. The most important thing if you don't get anything else out of this message, through those bends, those bruises, through, through those brokenness, through those burdens, we are still moving forward. You haven't given up, amen? You have not given up. And believe you me, you could have gave up. You could have gave up in February. You could have gave up in March, Brenda. You could have gave up, but we decreed and declare that God, if there's more in 24, I'm willing to go through whatever it is because the Bible that I read said, 
he will never put more on you than you can bear. And so we are in a season. And my question and reminder to you today is you have to know what season you are in. It is not for anybody else to determine your season because we are not all in the same season at the same time. Because if we were, it would be difficult to help each other because we'd all be in the same situation, feeling the same way. But God created us so that we can be helpers one to another. And in your time of need, I help you in my time of need, you help me and we help each other and we get through it. But as I said, we're in a season and I can recall growing up, I lived in a house of seasoners, a house of seasoners. And then by happen chance, not by happen chance, I went and married a seasoner, amen? And when I talk about this particular aspect of seasoner, I'm talking about the type of person that you deliver or give them food and they need a little bit of pepper, they need a little bit of salt, they need some onion powder, some garlic powder, they need something to season it up, amen. Now me on the other hand, I'm just grateful for food. I'm not a foodie or anything else. Food is just something to me that you, you have to have. And so I'm grateful, you know, what's put before me because I also know that there are choices. You can like it or you can not like it, but you have a choice, amen? to say, yeah, this wasn't exactly what I wanted. But those seasoners, those seasoners sometimes don't tell you, and before you know it, they are seasoning on top of what you thought was okay. And you know, some, I used to back in the day, we've been almost married 29 years, I used to be back in the day like, like now I put my heart earned into this. <laughs> you haven't even tasted it yet, yet you're seasoning. But those seasoners know what they need. They know what their palate is calling for. And so I cannot tell you what tastes good to you. I have to worry about my own season, amen? amen. And so this morning, we reflected in our praise and worship on a psalmist, psalmist that said, it's a new season. It's a new season, you ought to just tell somebody that. It's a new season. Because sometimes, if you're not careful, you will stay in the same season. And you want people to be in that season with you. You want them to, you know, be cold when you're cold, hot when you're hot. You are, but what did I say? We're not all in the same season. Seasons do change. And so I love what the psalmist said when she said, it's a new day. She said, it's a season of power and prosperity. God has given each of us power over our season. And out of that season comes the prosperity, not just financial prosperity, life is prosperity. To be able to be in good health. That's, is that not what Paul said? He said, above all things, I wish you would not only just prosper, because sometimes the world will stick you on prospering. And then you will compare yourself to someone else in your prosperity. And even though you may not have as much money as they have, you're better off than them because they have money and they're miserable. Somebody say amen. amen. They have money and they're trying to hold on to it, doing everything. they lost family members, friends, all trying to have more money. So it's not all about money. I want us to know that today. We should know that by now. God wants us to prosper in health, in every other way. Because if you're not in good health, your money ain't gonna help you anyway. Somebody else say hello. hello. It's not gonna help you. You can have all the money in the world. I, I, we all know about a man, right? If you've been reading your Bible, he said, I got everything. He was doing the inventory on all of his stuff. I got this, I got that, I got this, that, and the other. But that very night, what was about to happen, Bible scholars? His soul, his soul it was over. It was done, but he had money though. So let's understand that today, my question to you, are you aware of the season that you're in? Do you know what season 
that you're in. See, according to the Bible, a season is referred to a period of time or a moment designated for a specific purpose. It is a period of change that is marked by rejuvenation, growth, and even harvest. So today, for a moment, I would like to share a portion of a book in the Bible that talks about seasons. The book of Ecclesiastes is a very unique book, and it states powerfully and repeatedly that everything is vanity. Vanity, meaningless, nothing. There's a song years ago, I'll date some of y'all, and it says, you're so vain, you're so vain. That's the, the song was saying, you know, you are, it didn't say you were vain. She said, you're so vain that you think that this song is about you. That's how some people are. Some people are so, so vain. They think everything is about them. Nobody even thinking about you, but you think it's about you because you're in the wrong season. You're not in the right season. And so in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, everything is vanity, all of this stuff. And it's vanity if you're not focusing on God. That's what the psalmist was trying to say. If you're not focusing on God, nothing else matters. You can have everything, as we said, the rich man had. But he couldn't control death. And we're all going to have to go that way one day or the other, or if the rapture comes. So the book reveals that it's very necessary to fear God, especially in this confusing and frustrating world that we live in. We live in a world that, to, that will tell you something is right today and then tell you tomorrow is wrong. And if you don't know for yourself, you will be confused. You see, many folks are chasing after what you would call a lasting significance in their life. But no matter how much you chase, you still come back to the selfish, I need more. More of what? For God has reminded us that he's given to us faith, right? And we are to have more of that if anything else. But yet there are times when we don't get what we want and we're questioning God. Where is your more faith? That's what we should be measuring, not money, but faith. You see, as Ecclesiastes went on to say, this is what spoils life. This is what breaks up homes. This is what breaks up marriages and relationships. When we're trying to go after the more, this is what break up even today uh, families of children. Uh, children don't like their mothers and fathers. Nonsense. Because the Bible says, if we're doing according to what the word said, it said, train up a child in the way it should grow. It didn't say, like your child. It said, train them, teach them. But if you are setting a bad example of teaching and training, then the results can be a, a bit skewed. But our attempt to get more in life cannot be about more work, more pleasure, more money, more food, and more knowledge. Knowledge in God. But head knowledge oftentimes distracts people into thinking they are better. And if we don't manage it accordingly with humility, people then will look at you and feel that you are acting as though you're better than the next person. But it's not about that. You see, it's important for us to understand what was meant by all is vanity. Because throughout the book of Ecclesiastes, if you read throughout it, you will see it was a constant reminder. It's vanity. It's vanity. But remember the song. The song said, you probably think everything is about you. That's what the problem is. But you see, there was a scholar who we are grateful for who as we look at the learned folks and the scholars yet argue to this day who wrote Ecclesiastes, but we lean more towards the fact that it was Solomon. Solomon was the man of what? Wisdom. For the Bible says in all you're getting, if you don't get anything else, get an understanding. 
not somebody else's understanding. But get with God and get your understanding so that you know how you are to operate. But notably in the book of Ecclesiastes, we see the characteristics of Solomon. And we're reminded to go back to Second Chronicles. In the book of Chronicles, we find that God in his favor, and if you really dig deep, you have probably had a similar conversation. God asked Solomon, what do you want me to give you? What do you want? Anything. And you know how we are in our younger days if somebody asks you what you want, you know, you could come up with a lot of things. And sometimes you can't even come up, sometimes people shock you. You can't come up with nothing. You say, well, what do you want? And then you stuck. You don't know what to ask for. Should I ask for money? <laughs> should, should I, what should I ask for? But God asked Solomon, what do you want? What is it that you want? There was no, no uh, clause on that that would, you know, make him say, I better ask for this or that. But the Bible says, Solomon said, I want wisdom and I want knowledge so that I can lead these great people. That's what Solomon wanted. In his season of God asking him, what do you want? He said, I don't want money. I want wisdom. I want understanding. Ask yourself right now, if you were in a conversation with God right now, and he said, what do you want from me? After all that you've been through, all the seasons that you've gone through, what is it that you want? And I'll give it to you, because that's what he did for Solomon. When I look on further into 2 Chronicles 10, 12, they're about, I see he gave him exactly what he wanted because he said this, since this is your heart's desire, that's what he said, since that's what you really want, because what you ask for, remember we said what goes in you is going to come out of you and is what you're really all about. In his season, he said, Lord, just give me that wisdom. And God granted him the desires of his heart. He said, you could have asked for wealth you could have asked for possessions or honor, nor did you even ask me to kill your enemies. And he had some, and we have enemies too. People do you wrong, they do you dirty, and sometimes your first thought is not pray for them, if we was honest. But Lord, you gotta do something. But he said, you didn't even ask me for that. You didn't even ask me for long life, he said. You asked me for wisdom and knowledge for people, to help other people. What season are you in? Because we cannot always be in a season of do it for me. Do this for me. Do that for me. What are we doing for others? And God said to him, I will give you wealth. I'll give you possession. And I will even give you honor. He gave him everything that he did not ask for and more. We have to ask ourselves sometimes, what are we asking for? And this was so important, and it leads us into our text, that we need to know what season we're in. And in our text, in the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, we go on and we're reminded about these different seasons. For in these different seasons, there comes about a question. You see, living in the world, we know the seasons of winter, spring, summer, and fall. But our spiritual seasons are different. The first verse in the third chapter of Ecclesiastes said, there is a season, and that season is there is a time and a matter under heaven for everything. For everything. At certain times, it's a time for this. You're going to have to go, sometimes you're going to have to go through. There's going to be a season where you got to go through. You may not like it. You may not want to. But there's going to be seasons. There, there in, in, in some, you know, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand, but I'm sure many of you had seasons when you was broke. You had no money. But you here. Right? You clearly must have did it right because we're not coming putting no money on your books. Somebody say amen. You got through it. 
And he said, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. There's this time and there's that time. There's going to be those times, a time to plant and a time to pluck up. Sometimes we got to prune. Sometimes we got to have things there. Here it is. We love it. It's coming. He said, but there's a time. And he went on. The psalmist continued to go on. He said, there's a time to kill. There's time to heal. Sometimes we got to, and when we say kill, that's you're not going out and taking somebody out. But you got to kill that thing that's not moving you forward. You got you to you gotta kill it. You got you to gotta end it. You, and how we do that best is we stop talking about it. We got to heal from it. Too often I see people still today, they, something they went through 20 years ago, they still talking about it. You, you bringing life to it every time you talk about it. Every single time. It was, it was dead, and then you talk about it, and it's back. It's new, it's refreshed, and you got a new version of it. Because the enemy wants your mind thinking about it. Well, wait a minute. It, they did that too. But we got to let it go. There's a time to tear down. That's it. This ain't going nowhere. We, we tearing this down. And then there's a time to build up, right? And when we talk about tearing down, we also got to remember, sometimes we, can, we tear each other down. We tear each other down with looks. Sometimes you ain't even got to say nothing. But we tear it down with looks. I don't know about you, but I've had the fortune of telling people, what is you mad dog at me? You think I don't see you? Oh, no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. But, the, but you know, I just want to get it straight. Right? And there was a time in my life when I didn't say anything. But there's a time when you got to confront because other people are not taking it the same way I'm taking it. And they get hurt. Right? They, they quitting stuff, you know, and, and, and feeling they did something. But it's not. You didn't do anything. This person is just mean and ugly and nasty. And so there's a time you got to confront that. And so when we get to that place, I, that's, when you, you, that's why I said you don't stay in the same season. If I stayed in the season of not saying anything, a whole bunch of people would have been hurt. That's something that didn't really bother me. I could get through it, but why allow that to be? So we have to heal and we have to tear it down. We have to build. And then there's a time we have to weep, right? We weep. We weep, we go through because of how we feel. And we endure those things. And, and weeping is not always sad, right? It's not always just the state of sad is giving up, but it's, an, it's, a, it's a good emotion, right? Some folks need to cry. You know, you done held it in like you, to, you know, you just strong as Superman. And you know you hurting inside. If, you, if it's a season to cry, you need to cry. Get it out, right? You've heard people say a good cry. And for us, the sisters, we say an ugly cry. That means you have mascara on, you have makeup. <laughs> You was looking good, but then that thing hit you, and you didn't care, and you, it was crazy, you, but it was okay. It was an ugly cry, but after that ugly cry, you feel good. You feel good. You don't care what you look like. you like, listen, I know what I look like if, I, if it wasn't like that, but it is what it is right now because there's a season, and out of that comes laughter, right? Then you can laugh. Have you ever been? I was in a service many years ago, and if you've never seen the spirit of laughter go on, people, it's real. Everybody in the church was just couldn't stop laughing. At first, I thought, what in the world is going on? But then that thing got on me, and I was like, but I felt good after. Because sometimes you need a good laugh, right? We just be so intense, but we don't have to stay in that season. Laugh. It's okay to laugh. It is okay. Brenda, yes. It's okay to laugh. And then we dance. It's okay. We dance. David danced. David danced so much, he danced out of his clothes. Now, don't go that extreme. I mean, you can do that at home. But, but he, he, it, just, it was just overcome. And we got to go through these seasons so we can get, because if you don't cry, you're not going to laugh. Right? And if you don't go through, you're not going to heal. Right? And if you don't tear down, you're not going to build up. Right. You're just going to stay stuck. And so he went on to say, you know, we, sometimes we got to scatter, right? He said, sometimes we just got to live in the moment and the time. He said, there's sometimes there's a time we got to search out. And then there's sometimes we got to stop searching. It's okay. It's just like when we accepted Jesus Christ in our life. We wasn't looking for God no more. He was there. He showed us. He showed up. And then there's a time, you know, and it's going to hit a whole bunch of people. Sometimes you can, you, it's time to keep stuff. 
but sometimes you got to throw it away. You're not going to get back in them same clothes no more. Sometimes even your shoe, your foot get bigger. You can't wear them shoes no more. They hurt. You know they hurt. From the time you put them on, are you still going to put them on anyway? Feet be toe up. But there's a time sometime, you can, you, and if they're not bad, just bless somebody else with them. That's what I learned to do. I'll be like, oh, man, I remember when I used to, but I got to give it away. And sometimes I give away so much stuff, I'll be like, there's still dresses up in here? We got to give. Sometimes we gotta give, and not just, not just those physical things, but some of ourselves to people. Sometimes God put on your heart to call somebody, and you just need to call them and just listen. That's it. Just call and listen. You don't have to call and tell them what, everything you done been through. Just listen to them. And then there's a time to even mend, right? Sometimes we gotta mend. Because over a period of time, we've had people you know, in households, ain't talking to each other for weeks. I used to go a long time, I can't do it no more. I'd be like, okay, all right, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, you know. Don't act like y'all don't do it, come on now. Come on, there's somebody you ain't talked to this month. Because they said something that got on your nerves, right? Got on your nerves, because you know why? Because you think it's all about you, right? It's all about you, and sometimes it's about them. Whatever they said that disturbed you was for you to engage more, not to pull away, but for you to get right up in there and find out what was going on. Instead of being like the woman, you so vain, you think it's all about you. And then there's a time to love too, right? And the psalmist also says in hate too, hate is a very strong, to get to that point, we, we, we ought to be praying really, really hard, right? Because God wants everybody to be saved, wants everybody. And if we don't want everybody to go where we profess to go, then we selfish. So we have to let those things go. If you get to the point of hatred, because that's a very strong, strong emotion. If you can really get there, who you got to pray your way through that. Because we stand on the, the, the principle of love. We stand on the principle of love. And if, if, if hate can rule, we wouldn't even need to be up in here. There would be no need for salvation. There wouldn't be no need for any of these things because hate is going to take us out. And once we get past that, then we come into the closing part of the peace. What season are you in is the question. Where is your peace? And whether you're in a winter season when it's cold and barren, whether you're in a spring season, you know, where there's growth and new beginnings, Whichever one you're in, whether you're in summer, where there's abundance of fullness and fruitfulness, and whether you are even in autumn, when that's the time to let things go. The message is simply saying to all of us, to me included, what season am I in? Which cycle am I going through? And what valuable lesson are you going to learn once you go through this? Because God is reminding us that we should trust in him at all time. Amen. God's timing is not our timing, but God is seeking to lead us to rebirth and growth. And when we are reborn, we're able to let go of things and embrace change. Change is very difficult. It can be, but God has given us the gift of patience and trust. And that's what we get in all of these seasons. We go through because then we are able to, in, to, to embrace God and trust God so that we can trust whatever season we're in, we're going to be okay. And this is what we look at as the beauty of knowing that as a Christian, as a believer, we will get through it whether it's day or night, right? We're going to get through it because the day and the night represents when we should be resting, right, in night. And then there is seed time and harvest time, the time that we're supposed to go out. That is a season when we are to go out, when we are to do, and we are to be about our father's business. So it's so important for you today to say, God, what season am I in? And not how long I'm going to be in the season. But what season are we in? And the reason why we don't need to ask how long, because we didn't have rain in, in the time, you know, when we, we wasn't even supposed to have rain, right? But we endured it. 
And so sometimes we may need to be in a season a little longer. But when we come out of that season is what's so good about God. And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful to God that I've been through a lot of seasons. I'm grateful to God that sometimes I didn't recognize what season I was in, Gloria. But I was in that season. And I just want to ask somebody today, if you're in a season, just go ahead and praise God for the season you're in. Because if you don't, you cannot praise God for the season that you're in, you might stay stuck in a season longer than you need be. But when you praise God in that season, I guarantee you God will move you on. And so as I come to a close of today, as we reflect upon what season we're in, I just simply ask you to respond to your season appropriately as God would have you respond. See, you should not be responding in your season when it's not raining, but you in rain boots. Sun is shining outside, but you bundled up. God wants to reach you. God wants to reach us. God wants us to be prosperous. God wants us to be successful. God wants us to have good of this land. So whatever season you are in, if God is calling you, Today, I ask you to honor that season, to recognize that season, to know what God told us in January. Whatever season we're in, there's going to be more in 24. God bless you. May God continue to smile upon your feet. Stand to your feet. We thank God. We ask God that whoever will see this message. They will understand that they're not alone, that they're in a season as we all are in. But no matter that season, no matter how long, whatever it takes, if you call on Jesus right now, if you say, God, I don't, I don't even understand this season. One thing I do know that the Bible says, if you call on the name of Jesus, thou shall be saved. God bless. Thanks for watching. Be blessed by sharing this message. Support our ministry by following us on all social media platforms like YouTube. Hit the subscribe and like buttons, Pinterest, Facebook, and Instagram. Your generous giving allows the church to grow, which supports our efforts in providing the needed services for the community. There are a variety of ways for you to continue your giving. Go to the links in the description below and God bless.